Monsters is a YouTube channel about the worst human beings on the planet. The episodes of this podcast deal with murder, dismemberment, torture, rape, child abuse, and mental illness. Please turn back while you still can. Viewer discretion is advised. If you want to read more stories about the worst people on the planet, or find ways to support the show, you can visit our blog at thisismonsters.com. Paul John Knowles is an American serial killer who traveled through multiple states, stealing, raping, and killing along the way. He would kill at least 20 people from the age of 7 years old up to 65 years old. He killed men and women and even a police officer, only being stopped by three bullets to the chest. This is Monsters. Come back and find out that he's deceased. Tapping me on the head, telling me I'm cheating, telling me I'm, you know, let me see your phone. Just kill her and she dies. I think Diego Campione is totally in the wrong, and I hope he burns in hell for all his sins. Hell's not a very fun place. I only have two hands. I'm that four hands girl. I'm two hands. And I don't know, it's just get escalated and escalated. <laughs> Paul John Knowles was a petty criminal early in his life. Even though his father was known to dish out severe beatings, almost beating Knowles to death on multiple occasions, he continued committing crime. When he stole a bicycle at eight years old, his father turned him over to the state where he was placed in the Dozer School for Boys in Mariana, Florida. The school is well known for its history of abuse, beatings, rapes, torture, and even murder of students. The school opened in 1900, and by the late 20th century, a group of students from the 1950s and 1960s began sharing their experiences of abuse while attending the school. The school was investigated in 2008, and eventually shut down after countless allegations of abuse were confirmed by investigators. Some believe that his time at the Reform School helped turn him from a petty thief into a heartless killer. As an adult, Finally free of the hell he experienced at the Dozer School for Boys, Knowles went right back to theft to support himself. He was arrested multiple times from the age of 19 through his early 20s for burglary, auto theft, and kidnapping. He escaped from a work camp in 1972, but was captured three weeks later. He had three years added to his sentence for the escape and for resisting arrest. While he was in prison, he began corresponding with a young woman from San Francisco, California. Angela Kovic was a divorced cocktail waitress who was excited to have a new pen pal. She quickly fell in love with the man who would later be dubbed the Casanova Killer. Angela Kovic eventually flew to Florida to visit Knowles where he proposed to her. She hired a lawyer who managed to get her new fiancé out on parole. He was released in May of 1974 and flew directly to San Francisco to start a new life with his soon-to-be wife. Unfortunately, Kovic would later say that once she saw Knowles after he arrived in California, he projected, quote, an aura of fear, end quote, that scared her. She connected that to a recent visit she had made to her psychic, who told her that a dangerous man was about to enter her life. The young woman decided that she wasn't willing to take the chance and called off the wedding. The night that she dumped Knowles, he claimed to have killed three people on the streets of San Francisco, though this claim has never been substantiated. Heartbroken, Knowles traveled back to Jacksonville where he got into a bar fight and wound up pulling a knife on the bartender. He was arrested for aggravated assault and thrown in jail, but he was able to pick the lock on the cell door and slip out. On July 26, 1974, Paul John Knowles escaped from jail and began his murderous rampage. The same night that he escaped, he broke into the home of 65-year-old Alice Curtis. A retired school teacher who was home alone that night, Knowles gagged the woman and tied her to a chair so he could burglarize her home and steal her car. Though he never intended to kill Alice, he would ultimately cause her death. She wore dentures which slipped in her mouth, causing her to choke to death. He drove around in her car for a few days until police started suspecting him of the crime. While looking for a place to ditch the car, he ran into two young girls who were friends of his mother. Being afraid that 11-year-old Lillian Anderson and her 7-year-old sister, Milette, might identify him, 
he kidnapped them, strangled them both, and dumped their bodies in a nearby swamp. After dumping the bodies of the Anderson sisters, Knowles fled north to an area near Macon, Georgia. Knowles made audio diaries throughout his crime spree, which he would mail to an attorney in Florida. On one tape, he described picking up a hitchhiker named Alma, who claimed to be 13 or 14 years old, but seemed more like she was in her late teens. He was referring to 13-year-old Ima Jean Sanders. Knowles took her out into a wooded area where he raped and strangled the young girl. He left her body there, and when he went back two weeks later, the body had been dragged 8 to 10 feet by animals. He removed her jawbone and buried it somewhere nearby. When Knowles confessed to Imogene's murder, he was never able to identify her. Imogene's skeletal remains were found in 1976, but she wasn't identified until 2011. DNA samples from the unidentified girl's mother and sister were run through a national database and came back with a match. Once they were able to trace where Imogene had been before her death, they were able to connect her to Knowles, which led them to search through the transcripts of the serial killer's audio diaries. They were able to connect his description of Alma with the location of the burial and the fact that Imogene's remains were missing the jawbone. Knowles then traveled south to Atlantic Beach, Florida, where he met 49-year-old Marjorie Howie. Some accounts say that they met and went back to her apartment. Others say that he broke in. Either way, that was where he strangled her with a nylon stocking and stole her television on August 2, 1974. He traveled aimlessly for a while, possibly having gone back to the body of Imogene Sanders in the woods outside of Macon during this time period. On August 23rd, he broke into the home of Kathy Pierce and strangled her with a telephone cord. He did this in front of her three-year-old son, who he left unharmed. One of the reasons that police had difficulty connecting the crimes committed by Paul John Knowles was simply because there was no pattern. He killed children and adults, males and females, he raped some women and didn't rape others, he burglarized some homes and didn't others. On top of that, he killed people in different places in multiple states. There was nothing consistent about his crimes that would help police track him while on his spree. The only thing he stayed consistent on was that he never harmed young boys. Possibly seeing himself in the few young boys he did encounter, he always left them unharmed. I mean, if you ignore the harm that watching your mother be strangled to death right in front of you causes. On September 3rd, while still traveling in Alice Curtis's car, Knowles continued north to Lima, Ohio, where he stopped in a pub to have a drink. While there, he met a businessman named William Bates and struck up a conversation. The bartender recalled the two leaving together, and eventually William's wife reported him missing. A police search turned up an abandoned car near the pub that would end up being identified as belonging to Alice Curtis. Bates' body was found nude in the woods in October. Knowles had strangled him, stolen his credit cards, and took his car. He made it to Ellie, Nevada by September 18th, where he found an elderly couple at a campground. He tied them up and shot them before stealing their credit cards. The murder had no leads until Knowles confessed to the crime later that year. He then looped around and began traveling east through Texas. He spotted a stranded woman with a broken-down motorcycle about 35 miles east of San Antonio. When he pulled over and offered to help, the woman, Sherilyn Hicks, happily accepted. He kidnapped her, raped her, and strangled her before he dragged her body through a tangled barbed wire fence. On September 23rd, he arrived in Birmingham, Alabama, where he met a beautician named Ann Dawson. She ended up traveling with Knowles for about a week, and records show that she actually paid for some of the trip's expenses while she was with him. It's not known whether she went with him willingly or not. He was said to be a good-looking and charming character, which is how he got his name, the Casanova Killer. On the 29th, he got tired of her and killed her. During his confession, he claimed to have dumped her body in the Mississippi River, but no remains have ever been located. Knowles continued driving around aimlessly, living off of stolen money and credit cards. He traveled through Oklahoma and all the way up to Connecticut, with no known bodies in his wake. In Marlboro, Connecticut, he broke into the home of Karen Wine, who was home with her 16-year-old daughter, Dawn. He then raped them before strangling them with a stocking and got back on the road. By October 18th, Knowles had made his way down to Woodford, Virginia, where he busted into the home of 53-year-old Doris Hovey. 
he grabbed her husband's rifle and shot her to death before wiping his prints off of the weapon and placing it beside her body. Police found no sign of rape or burglary and said it looked like there was no other motive for the crime beside the desire to kill. In Key West, Florida, Knowles picked up two hitchhikers with the intention of killing them, but he ended up getting pulled over by a patrol officer. Even though the car was reported stolen, the officer let him go with a warning, but it still shook up the killer enough that he reconsidered his plan. The hitchhikers quite literally dodged a bullet when Knowles let them out of the car in Miami. The encounter with the police officer prompted Knowles to call his attorney, who pleaded with him to turn himself in. Knowles refused, but he did give the lawyer a taped confession before hitting the road once again. He arrived in Macon, Georgia on November 6th and met a man named Carswell Carr. This was a time when people trusted strangers. You could pick up a hitchhiker or invite someone back to your house without automatically assuming they were going to stab you to death with a pair of scissors. Carswell invited Knowles to sleep at his house that evening, and once there, his guest stabbed him to death with a pair of scissors. Raise your hand if you saw that coming. He then strangled Carswell's 15-year-old daughter to death and attempted to have sex with the corpse. Knowles would later claim that he was unable to perform with the girl's body. One of the few women who was picked up by Knowles who was not killed was British journalist Sandy Falls. They met at a bar in Atlanta and traveled together for a couple of days. She found the man handsome and charming and was interested in being intimate with him. Knowles was unable to perform sexually with the woman, suggesting that he was not able to get aroused when he was with a consenting partner. The couple went their separate ways on November 10th, and Knowles ended up picking up one of Sandy's friends, Susan McKenzie. He tried to force her to have sex with him at gunpoint, but she managed to get away and notify police. When the officer approached him, Knowles pulled out a sawed-off shotgun and escaped. A few days later, while in West Palm Beach, Florida, Knowles broke into the home of a disabled woman named Beverly Maybe. He kidnapped her sister and stole their car, but instead of killing her, he dropped her off the following day about an hour north in Fort Pierce. While heading north, a Florida Highway Patrol trooper, Charles Campbell, recognized the stolen car and pulled Knowles over. The killer was able to best the officer and took him hostage in his patrol cruiser. Knowles used the emergency lights to pull over James Meyer, who he also took as hostage, after ditching the patrol car. He made it into Georgia, where he pulled over in a wooded area, handcuffed the two hostages to a tree, and shot them both in the head. While fleeing from the area, he attempted to blow through a police roadblock, but was unsuccessful. He crashed the car and began shooting at police while running away. Even though he was shot in the foot, he was able to evade police for a short time. They used dogs and helicopters to search for the violent man, but eventually, 27-year-old Vietnam veteran David Clark found Knowles and held him at gunpoint until police were able to pick him up. On November 17, 1974, Paul John Knowles was arrested for multiple murders, rapes, and thefts all over the country. He would claim to have been responsible for 35 murders, but only 20 have ever been confirmed. On December 18, 1974, Knowles was being escorted by Sheriff Earl Lee and GBI agent Ronnie Angel to a location where he had claimed to have dumped the gun he took from Trooper Charles Campbell. While in the backseat of the police cruiser, Knowles was able to pick the lock on his handcuffs with a paperclip and managed to get his hands on Sheriff Lee's gun, firing one round. Agent Angel turned and fired three shots into Knowles' chest, killing him instantly. He was 28 years old. If you like these videos, please hit subscribe, click like, or leave me a comment. If you'd like to support the channel, you can donate a few bucks through Buy Me A Coffee. You can click the link within the YouTube banner or go to buymeacoffee.com backslash monsters. Another way you can support the channel is by using our Amazon link anytime you're going to buy something at Amazon. You can go to our website at thisismonsters.com and click through the Amazon banner. Anytime you're already going to buy something from Amazon, you can click through that link and buy your items at no additional charge, and we get a small commission. I'm always working to provide more content at better quality, and your support helps me do that. I thank you in advance.